everybody, today we're going to be looking at alchemy for a few minutes. If you're using other synthesizers, uh, primarily subtractive synthesis, but this uh, particular instrument can do all kinds, I think you really need to come in and look at some of the cool subtractive synthesis stuff we can do inside alchemy itself. So I've got an arpeggiator here just so I can get a groove started, but uh, we're going to turn it off for just a moment so you can hear it. So what we're going to do with alchemy is initialize the preset. Start with a blank slate here. Come into uh, our A instrument. And for this, we're going to come over here to the oscillator. And inside here, we have all these uh, waveforms, basic waveforms, complex waveforms, pulse, saw, sine, and square. Well, we're going to do something with the saw, and we're going to use one of the vintage ones. So this is essentially recorded from a vintage synthesizer oscillator. You can see what the waveform looks like. It's definitely not your traditional saw, but... It has some amazing harmonics going on. It sounds amazing. It's really rich. It has stuff we can do with. Now, with subtractive synthesis, the whole concept is we put some sort of oscillator out there, and then we take things away from it, essentially using a filter. And uh, we have other things like envelopes and LFOs. But it's a really simple process. So the more of a rich sound source we can give it, the more interesting things we have afterwards. So we have some really cool settings right here. And we have a basic level. We can change the symmetry of the waveform, which creates some interesting sounds. I'll play that here. So it's uh, warping that uh, initial waveform a little bit. We have some um, some phase we can add in there, some sync. So sync is a, a really useful tool which takes a, a separate sound source. And every time that we set this to a different setting, it's going to force the original oscillator repetition to restart maybe before it's ready to. So you come up with different pitches. Such a rich sound from that. And then we have our unison settings where we can do one synth and we can go all the way up to uh, 16 different voices all doubled and with different settings of tune. So let's turn this thing on and latch it. We'll let that run now. Less detune means it's going to sound a little bit better together, but with more detune, it's going to really pull those apart, but create a huge sound. And then on top of that, of course, we have a filter section built right into our A area here, the first of our slots for sounds inside Alchemy. So we can turn on one of these. We have a full set of low pass, band pass, high pass, plus other effects if we want to. So we're going to use uh, one of the low pass 24 dB per octave. Edgy is what it's called. Let's turn this back on. Turn up the resonance. And adjust that low pass filter. So that's getting rid of the high frequencies, but when we add the resonance, it adds like a boost right at the cutoff part. So we end up getting some nice, like additional stuff happening right at the cutoff area. Thank you. 
Let's add another thing in the second slot. But we could do one of these other non uh, filter things. We have other things down here. So we could do like a down sample if we wanted to. Or just about any of these other things if we want to. There's a bit crusher, there's a ring mod. Other things in there. So lots of control in terms of what we can do with this. Three of those there, and then we have a whole other effect section we can add down here. So we're talking about some fairly complex things. And then, without having to use any other effects, we could really easily come through and modulate some of these parameters using our really extensive modulation set here. So for instance, you can see I click on it, it shows up automatically, and then I can come through and decide what we want to have this done. We can do this with performance controls that we have in here. We can do it with MIDI, note properties, envelope follower, which is really cool, but another video um, that we should do. Let's do a new LFO. And for this LFO, we're gonna do random patterns Nice LFO shape here. I'm gonna do another chord within latch mode. And we're gonna turn up the depth. We can even come through here. See, so yeah, I like how the depth of this was changing. So it was doing a little bit more and a little bit less. We could actually modulate this with a third LFO so that it actually mimics me changing that somewhat. So let's latch this again. <laughs> Click on this. And then it builds and contracts over time. So cool. So layer after layer after layer of modulation on this actually can make some really interesting things happen over time. Now, I'm probably going a little bit fast for some of this, but the main point of all of this is inside Alchemy, when you're using the different slots here and you want to just do some really basic synthesis with some really interesting sounds and capabilities that we have so much of that here. So we can actually create a number of things, including now, so say I'm do adding another one, we have A and B. So we have all of these things.
So we can actually come through and create all of these super cool layers now. We can do all four of those, including a morph pad between them. So this becomes a very, very powerful subtractive type synthesis tool if we want to use it that way. This is just one of the many colors that we have with this. Uh, in fact, we can actually come through and make the second one we did here um, like a sub patch to it. And then that chirping sound gets annoying, and so we go back and change it all. Okay, that's it for today's video. Just want to remind you about some of these capabilities inside Alchemy where we have the full synthesis engine, and it's a darn good one too. So you can do amazing things with this. Uh, all within this instrument without having to use any other effects or MIDI effects or other processors. It's all tied into this one. Okay, hope you're having a great week. More to come soon.